20 years after the 9-11 terror attacks on America, which killed nearly 3,000 people, the man who's thought to have masterminded them, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, and his four key associates are in court for pre-trial hearings. It's their 42nd appearance, and the judge is the eighth to have presided over the case, which has been bogged down for years. The proceedings are taking place in Guantan Guantanamo Bay in Cuba, from where our North America correspondent Ali Mbul sent this report. A demand for justice following that horrific day 20 years ago led to a wide-reaching response, but one that since led to accusations the US perpetrated injustice. In a tiny corner of Cuba, one notorious byproduct of the 9-11 attacks still remains. Prisoners are still being held in limbo in Guantanamo Bay. Well, of course, the US authorities have allowed us to be here, but they are extremely restrictive in controlling what we can show in terms of people and structures. They certainly haven't allowed us anywhere near the detention facilities where the remaining prisoners are being held. When I was last here, things were very different. We saw some detainees mingle and eat together and interact with the guards, though we knew of other camps where prisoners didn't have such privileges. We were even able to wander through the long-abandoned Camp X-Ray, where in the months after the 9-11 attacks, men and boys were first transferred, interrogated, and in many cases, tortured. Of nearly 800 men and boys who've been detained at Guantanamo Bay, 39 remain. About a quarter were cleared for release as far back as 2010, but are still waiting to leave. Two have been charged and convicted in what are called military commissions. 17 have never been charged, but will remain in prison for life because they're deemed a security threat. The other 10 are still awaiting trial. They include five men accused of involvement in the 9-11 attacks. Well, for the first time in more than 18 months, those five men were inside a courtroom. We couldn't film it, but we were in the gallery just through the glass, just feet away from those defendants, including at the very front there with the ginger beard, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, the man who it's believed conceived of the idea of 9-11 and took that idea to Osama bin Laden. But the proceedings themselves were extremely slow. People often ask, is there an end in sight? And for a long, long time, there was not even a middle in sight. But now, we are in the middle of the case because the wrestling with the question of what effect torture has on the admissibility of statements is really the heart of the case. Detail. Hope. But that's where things are stuck. All the while, the family members of those killed in 9-11 wait for resolution and the detention center here looks no closer to shutting down. And every time there are these pre-trial hearings involving the 9-11 suspects, family members of victims of the attacks are invited to come and observe proceedings. And indeed, some have been here this week. They've often talked about how difficult it is to sit so close to men accused of involvement in killing their loved ones. They've talked about their frustration about how, to, how after all this time, they still don't even have a trial date for those men. And of course, it's all the more difficult this visit because they'll be commemorating the 20th anniversary of the tragedy in just a couple of days' time, a long way from home and in a place with such a dark and uncomfortable history. Ali Mugul, thank you.